Hey guys, welcome to another fun week of the podcast. This is a live show from Scranton, Pennsylvania. It was a lot of fun. It was actually taped a couple months back, but it's uh, pretty evergreen for the most part. Uh, A couple notes from the episode itself. There were a couple technical things that happened to the recording, so I did actually have to edit out uh, a story that Chris Dickinson told about a cab driver, and that's what I joke about when Sanjay comes up, and so if you missed the reference, you didn't really miss the reference. Also, since this was recorded... Brian Myers or Kurt Hawkins actually signed back with the WWE, and that's pretty exciting and great for him. So obviously when this was recorded, he was still on the independent wrestling scene. Uh, Just a little business before we get into the episode. Yes, the Wrestling Road Diaries 3 is up for pre-sale. There's been a lot of orders so far, and it just makes me super happy that you guys are willing to support just based on the trailers or maybe my excitement for it or just the fact that you get this for free for so many years. Just know there's a giant smile on my face. Thank you so much. You're going to love it. It's such a great movie. ColtMerch.com, of course, where you can buy that. You know, Grado, who plays such a huge role in this movie, he's going to be a part of a huge show in Glasgow, Scotland, on November 20th at the SSE Hydro Arena. ICW presents Fear and Loathing. Finn Balor is going to be there. Kurt Angle is wrestling. The Dudleys are wrestling. All the stars of ICW will be wrestling. Last year, they had like over 5,000 people. It's going to be pretty nuts if you're in the area. Area. It's a no-brainer. Tickets are at insanewrestling.co.uk. Marty and I are also going to be doing a huge show. Not that big, but pretty big for us. The night before Thanksgiving at the North Bar in Chicago. Tickets are at unprofessionalwrestling.brownpapertickets.com. And we do have a sponsor for the episode this week, and it's WWE 2K17, the video game. WWE 2K17 is back. It's worldwide. Most importantly, they've entered Suplex City with their cover boy, Brock Lesnar. This year's game features amazing graphics and gameplay, as well as a gigantic roster featuring the biggest and brightest stars of the WWE past and present, including so many guys that have been on this very podcast before. Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Ambrose, the list goes on and on. This year includes their powerful creation suite with favorites like Create a Superstar, Create a Championship, as well as new creation options like Create a Video and Create a Victory. Let the new promo engine bring drama and personality to the life in the my career and wwe universe modes your words will shape your character as they rise from the ranks from nxt to the wwe to wwe hall of fame maybe in wwe 2k18 there's an option where like vince mcmahon gets so mad at your hall of fame speech and he like drags you off the stage maybe that'll be downloadable content uh the soundtrack this year it's actually curated by puff daddy sean combs to you and i which is pretty crazy you can also get access to bill goldberg from his wcw days and his wwe days you probably want from the WCW days, though. It looks like a great game this year. For more information on everything WWE 2K17, go to WWE.2K.com. WWE 2K17 is on the shelves now. Go out and grab your copy today. All right, business is done. No interruptions. Enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. It died down so fast. Hey, hey. All right. How you guys doing? Come on in. Sit down. Relax. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds and souls, the hearts and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Cole Cabana. Hello. I am a live podcaster. I'm, uh, God, any suggestions? I'm an artist. I'm a hide and seeker. I was hiding and seeking. I, uh, I am a TV star. Oh, you guys are just sending me compliments, aren't you? Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am not sitting here live in my studio. In Chicago, Illinois. I am in Scranton, Pennsylvania, in front of a live studio audience. You two laughed at me when I said Scranton, but did I screw that up? No. It's just funny that I'm here. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that I'm in Scranton, Pennsylvania doing a show. Before we go any further, though, this is a fan-supported, listener-supported show, supported by people just like you. We give you free charge every single Thursday on coldcommentary.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Let somebody know. If you got Facebook, um, 
message them. <laughs> uh, do a reaction video to a live podcast, maybe. That seems to get some uh, interest. If you got Twitter, I got Twitter, at Colcomana. If you got Instagram, at Instagram, at Instagram. Go to at Instagram on Instagram. <laughs> It's a real good, it's, a good, it's got a lot of good pictures. At Colt Cabana on Instagram. Uh, share and talk to your friends. Best way you can support, though, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads. The best way that you can support. And uh, during the live show that we're going to be doing a little bit, I'll be upstairs. Got all the swag at ColtMerch.table. That is the best way that you can support. Um, okay, we're going to bring a bunch of guests up here. I'm very excited. Uh, I wrote some... Pretty stupid jokes to, to, fill, to fill this out. Um, ma'am, yes, I'm pointing you out. What, what is your name? Amelia. What is it? Amelia. Amelia. I, I, I get real paranoid about these live shows because I'm just like, I don't think anybody wants to come to these. I don't, I don't know what's going on. And, uh, and then I saw you outside in the line. I'm like, she doesn't want to come to my podcast. <laughs> And your front row, your front row. You're here with your, grandson. with your grandson. Do you? No. <laughs> oh. the Coco. <laughs> I, mean, I got a melee coming up here. You can just hold it right there. Tell, tell me your relationship with professional wrestling. I watch it. You do watch every it every week. Every week. Yes. You know the guys. Yes. How long have you been watching? Well, I watched for 20 years back in the 70s. So in the 70s, I'm which was ten, in the 70s, which was 10 years, you watched for 20 years. Whatever. <laughs> I got it. Took a second, but I got it. <laughs> so you're good. You're gonna know everything. You're excited. Oh yeah. I'm wrong. I, I thought I knew my demographic, but I didn't. Please give it up for me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can be a fan. Anyone likes chit-chat about professional wrestling. This is great. We are in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which, of course, is the home of one specific thing. The office. The office. Are they known for anything else? No. Hot dogs? Potholes. Potholes. <laughs> <laughs> or just pot. <laughs> I've heard things. Uh, the office, I guess, infamously known for uh, one stupid joke. And that is... Oh, what were you going to say? It ain't no party like a Scranton party. I don't think that's what it's known for. <laughs> it ain't no party like a Scranton party because a Scranton party don't stop. I think, it's, <laughs> I think it's known for that's what she said. So um, I, here, here we go. I'm going to say some famous lines from the world of wrestling. If you think it fits, you guys can all reply with uh, that's what she said. And if, it, if it's awful, if it's shit, you don't appreciate a good joke. You, you let me know that I'm a, that, that myself and Marty DeRosa, who did help me with this, are bad joke writers. Um, so like if, uh, if, let's say Brian Alvarez is talking about something and he says, minus five stars. That's what she said. There you go, that could be a thing. Business is about to pick up. That's what she said. Let's get ready to suck it. That's what she said. That's a good one. Uh, Jeff Jarrett, who is here, he would say, my finishing move is the stroke. That's what she said. Oh, the decent, decent. Um, what if uh, Jim Ross was commentating? He said, what a small package. That's what she said. All right. Or maybe he said, maybe he said, uh, make sure to hook the leg. <laughs> that was more, kind of more of a laugh than that, what she said. Um, it was a two-minute squash. That's what she said. That was a hell of a finisher. That's what she said. Uh, I think last, oh, last but not least, maybe, um, ah, put the strap on him. That's what she said. Yeah, all right, those were all right, hey? <laughs> Comedian. I realize it's a 10-year-old joke that got old within one week on The Office, but I appreciate you putting up with my stupid sense of humor. Uh, you ready to start this show? Yeah. All right. Uh, first to the stage or to the podcast, please uh, help me welcome uh, FKA, formerly known as Kurt Hawkins, now wrestling as Brian Myers. Yeah. Yeah. 
And make sure you take the seat furthest away and then wait until I say your name until you take the 10 minute walk down the entrance way. <laughs> if I knew I was uh, following up a bunch of that's what she said jokes, it would have sat even further, I think. <laughs> No, like my sense of humor? Oh, man. Is that the longest uh, entrance way you've ever done? No. Well, no. First off, I was at the show last week where Swaggle, who's a midget, was... We can't say that. ...yards away. He's my best friend. I can call him a midget. Um, he was like a football field's distance away, and he waddled all the way to the table and ate up half the show. So that was, <laughs> that was perfectly fine. And he literally then ate up half the show. <laughs> He's gotten so big. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, I was setting you up for... Um, for your, your, Wrestle, your WrestleMania story where you guys... Did. Oh, I, I mean, I feel like I've told that a lot. Have you, you told that too much? I think much? I have, yeah. What's the quick gist of it? Uh, basically, it was WrestleMania 24 in Orlando, whatever that stadium is, you know, some massive entranceway, and apparently on the biggest day of the year, Vince McMahon still felt the need to fuck with the Major Brothers, and uh, as soon as we got there, and we're, you know, Zack Ryder and I are dressed to the nines, they're like... Quick, quick, Vince, we need you and gorilla, blah, blah, blah. So we just drop our bags. We're in, like, suits and ties and crap. And they're like, uh, yeah, Vince doesn't think you can do the run-in, so he wants to see you guys do it. We're like, really? And we're just, okay, go. And we're, we sprint down to the ring. Okay, do it again. And it's got to be about, like, seven times and we realized that nobody was even watching us. <laughs> and it was a total just rib to fuck our day up and realize, you know, it was our first... First mania and everyone's nervous is and it's WrestleMania. So, I know, yeah. so like you were probably in the nicest possible. Like there was never down. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. He wants to see it, and we just kept sprinting and sprinting and sprinting like a football field. Like, were were you like, you were just in your dress clothes? Dress clothes, yeah. which is probably the the most you've ever was, paid for dress clothes if it's WrestleMania. No. Yeah, yeah, but it was, it was just drenched, right? But yeah, it was it was ridiculous. Yeah, like it's a run. There's nothing about like people. Everyone in this room can run. It's not like I mean. I would hope so. We've all seen that Vince McMahon clip get in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe all these years it wasn't a, it wasn't a rib. He was really just looking out for our there well-being. Were, yeah, yeah, there was a secret. He's just like, I've had some bad runs in my days. You can see that. I'm just worried about you. Uh, yeah, we've been doing a lot of shows recently. Yeah. I really wanted to put you on the spot about your famouser. About my famouser? I don't yeah. do a famouser. Well. I do. Uh, you don't take one either, apparently. I don't. <laughs> I wrestled Billy Gunn last we spent, week. We spent a weekend with Billy Gunn last weekend, which was like, I found him to be very enjoyable. Have you ever spent a lot of time with Billy Gunn in the past? So, uh, in like 2013, when they opened the Performance Center, Kurt Hawkins wasn't doing a whole hell of a lot on TV, so I got a call one day from the office, and I'm like, okay, I'm either fired, or I don't know what's going on here, and they're like, hey, we want you to go to the PC, and I'm like, and do what? And they're like, just... Be in classes and like go. They're somewhere. like, we need help putting aluminum siding. On the <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what do you mean? So like, basically, I live in New York. And my commute would be like, I'd catch a flight Sunday night to Orlando and just attend class all week long, <laughs> like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, go home Friday morning. Like it was actually pretty sweet, and I got paid for it and everything. But I was in Billy Gunn's class at the performance center for a whole month, and I would like, I mean, it was. He liked me, and I, I, at least I thought so, and I, you know, I liked him, and like, he would teach something, I would do it first try and be done and do it flawlessly, and then watch like, football dudes stumble through it, and it was great, I actually enjoyed it. Were, yeah, was, is there a little bit of like, uh, I've been on TV for the last seven years, and like, now I'm back in class? I'm, uh, yeah, but I, was like, I felt like I was being tested, like if I were to bitch like, in that way, then it would just backfire, so I was like, oh yeah, sure, oh, okay, yeah, I can do a drop kick. all right, I'll be on the apron now, and watch, you know... Football Tom mess it up, you know, whatever, you know. It's pretty, pretty enjoyable Let's for me. Let's watch the uh, hand slide. Oh, sorry, stories. sorry. It's a big echo here. We have a, we have a shotgun mic. That I is... could be like Austin's podcast and just breathe into the mic like, <sighs> 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 while you're talking. Okay, I'll try to stop. Uh, also, we don't promote other people's podcasts sorry. on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll edit if uh, my editor can edit out, okay. and that would be me, and I'm way too lazy to do that. All so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We will, we will keep that in. I will not mention that anymore. But anyway, Billy Gunn. Yeah, so you were in his class. Totally. In his class. Yeah. A relationship with him. For sure. Loved your dropkick. Yep. Said, great dropkick, go on the apron. Amongst other things. So yeah. then we were wrestling him last week. Or you're wrestling. Wait, uh, I'm wrestling. Well, well we, we both, both wrestled. We both wrestled. Yeah, yeah. but it was a two-day thing, so I wrestled him the first day. And uh, he showed up like a little late because like, someone has flight problems or something. So I was, the building is like upstairs and the downstairs is the locker room. So I see the promoter. I'm like, he's like, oh, Billy's here. I'm like, oh, cool. Is he in a good mood? He's like, I don't think so. And I'm like, great. 
So I go downstairs to, with Swaggle, and we run into him. And Swaggle's like, hey, Billy, do me a favor. Stiff the shit out of this guy tonight. And he, like, smacks me, and he goes, I ain't fucking working with Kurt. <laughs> And, like, you know, the two and a half of us are all just staring at each other, going, like, what's going on here? And I realize right away, I go, oh, he has no fucking clue who Brian Myers is, right. but he knows who Kurt Hawkins is. And I go, no, actually, Billy, we, we are working together. He goes, work with you? Oh, fuck, that'll be easy. And, like, mood spun around, like, completely. And I was like, yes. So, um, you didn't call me, you didn't be like, I heard you're working Brian Myers, he's pretty shitty. If I had known, I probably could have <laughs> messed with him a little bit more, but yeah. we were all just kind of like, what's going on here when he said that? And I was like, oh, he has no clue. And it was like, I sent him a couple tweets during the week and he kind of ignored those too. So I was like, man, he didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. And then I wrestled him. Well, I, I can keep going with this. Okay. So then the match, um, we do our entrances and the crowd starts a rockabilly chant and like won't let us start, like this massive rockabilly chant. Probably the biggest. <laughs> Rockabilly chant ever because the actual Rockabilly didn't get chanted. Never got a chant. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I'll be honest, I completely forgot about Rockabilly <laughs> until you just said it. Really? And it took me like two seconds to be like, oh yeah, he was Rockabilly. <laughs> okay. So then he's probably thinking that too. So then he's got the mic because he's trying to do his whole uh, two words for you a bit. And he goes, if y'all start doing my gimmicks, the name of my gimmicks will be here all night. So then the crowd starts doing it. Just chanting his name. Oh, my God. New Age Outlaws. Like, the whole that like, went through the gamut. Smoking guns. Smoking guns. Billy and Chuck. They were out there, like, forever. So, like, eating up all our time. So, like, I cut him off. I jump him from behind. I'm beating him up wherever I get my heat and stuff. And then it got down to pretty quiet. And I go, you forgot one. Dolph Ziggler's dead. <laughs> and I fucking... <laughs> and I start... I start stomping him out, and he's just like, and I'm like, I'm like, man, was that crossing the line? And I'm, I'm like putting the boots to him, and he's just giggling his ass <laughs> off. So I'm like, all right, so he's definitely in a good mood now. So then that leads to like me beating him up some more, and he goes, <laughs> I got him in a hole, and he goes, hey, kid, pick me up and give me a clothesline. I'll take that inside out bump for you. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, shit. You guys know what I'm talking about, like the Rikishi bump I call it? Send him off, big clothes on, he takes it, boom, he lands. I go to cover and he goes, I haven't taken that bump in years, kid. <laughs> so, wound up being a great experience. Not uh, for me, though. Yeah, well, <laughs> oh, I enjoyed your experience I, I for all on, the wrong reasons. I was on the other end of a Famouser, and as he was about to give it to me, like, in my head, I was doing the sweet, like, Rob Van Dam, like, on my head, doing a headstand for, like, Legit, like, in my head, like, for, like, an hour, but, like, for four seconds. Imagine, like, one, one thousand, two, one, and I'm like, on my head like doing a headstand. The best famous or bump of all time. Yeah, and, um, and as I took it, and as Brian reminded me afterwards, it was probably the worst uh, famous or of all Holy time. Shit. It was in slow motion. In slow motion, tucked my knees. I mean, it, Did, looked, I like, it looked like when Teddy Long had a heart attack on SmackDown. <laughs> I would describe it better than a bump. But in my head, it was... It was I love that he, like, you were like real like, insecure about it, and you came down, and you were like, ah, how was that bump? And I, I couldn't even lie to you. I was like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> Not good. Uh, one more thing I want to touch on before we get out of here. You found, uh, you found this new... Uh, like, for me, a guy who had 10 million loops on a vine that went... Um, that went gro uh, you have one? Viral. You did? I went viral. With what? I put a sticker on Brian Cage's back. Oh. <laughs> but didn't... I, yeah. Did you get the credit for that? People steal that. People stole it. Okay, that's Didn't not, get the credit. That's not cool. You kind of... You found a little new thing of fame here on YouTube. Is that right? Oh, Grimm's Toy Show? Gr Does anybody know Grimm's Toy Show? Yeah! This is especially the... Set, the, the, the uh, how old are you, buddy? The 13-year-old kid. That's about the demographic, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I hate Grimm's. Ooh. You, is this crazy that... The guy from Grimm's Toy Show is right here? I, I, I like him because he's really good. Got one. <laughs> <laughs> You're a YouTube star. Apparently, yeah. For a 14-year-old. We just set up the big blow-off, brother. We got a ladder match coming up with Creator Pro. Yeah? Yeah, big time. So, I mean, so, like, what is this? What You're, um, you're basically, like... I don't want to disclose the secrets because, you know... I don't want to just, like, uh, describe for the, for the people over 18 who have no clue what the fuck uh, I'm talking about. It's, <laughs> it's, it's almost indescribable, I would say. If, you'd have to see it to watch it. I mean, I mean, to understand it. Like, it should be about wrestling figures, but it's, like, completely not. And this dude started a YouTube channel, and yeah. he has 100,000 It's ridiculous. Viewers. Yeah, his views are out of control. It's, I think it's very entertaining. I think it's, like, a guilty pleasure type 
viewing because like I'll get kids like him saying you know they just want to talk to me about it nonstop, but then I'll get dudes like my own age who are like I've seen you on that show you know it's whatever I watch it sometimes you know and, like they like <laughs> they want to talk about it but every it's, single like, they, every it's, single Tuesday yeah, at four p.m. Yeah, I'm like exactly, oh, yeah, yeah. I get it's it. like their little guilty pleasure but. Yeah. It's been That's a lot great. of fun. Yeah. Well, where can they find that on the internet? Uh, Grimm's Toy Show. It just put it on YouTube. There's a bazillion videos, and you can get <laughs> caught up to speed. Yeah. And where can we find you on the internet? I got a Pro Wrestling Tea store, and my Twitter is still at the Kurt Hawkins because I don't want to lose that blue check. It's a big blue. The nope. big blue. Yeah. You hold on no, to that. People big are paying blue. for that these days. Which really? I'm, yeah. You haven't heard, you heard about that? No. Yeah, I ain't doing that. No way. So. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should sell mine. Yeah. And plus, if I if I change it, Billy Gunn's not going to know who I am. Too, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ryan Miners, ladies and gentlemen. That was great. Uh, let's welcome up my next guest to the fake state. Let's welcome up my next guest to the floor. Uh, <laughs> please, please welcome um, uh, the owner of WrestlePro and uh, one half of the owners of Creative Pro Wrestling School, Pat Buck. Hello. Hey, Pat. We didn't even plug the. Uh, th- that was your business your, partner. I think your people, business partner. I th- some people get confused because they're not familiar with me. So I think they were weird looks. Another guy wearing a Creator Pro shirt with the ginger beard, ginger hair coming up. You know. Uh, but yeah, Brian and I are business partners, and we run a wrestling school that he didn't plug. That he didn't plug. <laughs> I just said, where are you at on the internet? What do you? G- CreatorProWrestling.com. Cole Cabana will be there tomorrow. That's right. Uh, and in this podcast world. You I was there be. six months ago. <laughs> and it was great. Yeah, it was. You guys are both training people. You have two schools now? Is that true? I have two schools. Is that something you tell people? Yeah, uh, kind of. It's, it's hard to kind of... Are you collecting schools? I, I would love to have uh, Creator Pro Scranton, if anyone's interested. <laughs> yeah. so, That's where they make the... F- this, is, this is where they make the Creator Pro, the Creator Pro flyers. Damn it. Oh, that was a paper it. joke. It a, yeah. Fly. Oh, God. That's not what she said, huh? <laughs> Jesus. I'll, all right. Yeah, well, <laughs> two schools. I mean, started from, I think once I went through the whole era of, okay, WWE is not going to hire me. Uh, I left, and I kind of had a real big chip on my shoulder. And I was like, you know what? Well, like, give that some context. You left. You didn't leave WWE while in WWE. No, 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 no. Yeah. You were... Uh, you were in their system around it, trying to get a job, kind of. For a long time. Yeah. yeah. First you know. OVW, then Florida Championship Wrestling. OVW for four and a half years, doing everything that I could to, to you know, get that piece of paper, get in there, because I thought that was the way to go. I mean, other guys do the independence, and I wanted to, too, and I did, but then uh, I saw a couple of my good friends at the time, like Mike Mondo and other guys, you know, moved down there, and they went through, you know, to me, OVW was seven days a week. So it was like, okay, uh, independents weren't that. It was either, you know, weekends or, you know, carve your knee. And I wasn't doing well in the independents. I felt like the one heartbreaking moment for me was wrestling on a New Jersey independent show, and I was heckled for wearing trunks. <laughs> <laughs> People didn't understand. Everyone was wearing pleather pants and, uh, you know, jeans and shirts, and I was given a hard time. And That's I, hilarious. It was crazy. It was, I was like, these are trunks and Look boots. at you, loser, looking like a professional. <laughs> It was crazy. So I was like, you know what? I really like OVW. I went down there. It was seven. It was really much like seven days a week. Like you get to immerse yourself in the world of professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And there were, it was it was great, but could never get hired. So you know, when they closed up shop or the deal went down south to Florida, uh, I followed down there too. It and literally went down south. Yeah. The deal went south. They, yeah, it went down south, and they moved down south from Louisville to to Florida. Yes. So went down there, ch- tried the same thing, and then. Uh, they had this great idea, maybe you could be a referee. And dropped a whole bunch of weight and, you know, did all, jumped through that hoop too, and that didn't work out either. So came back up to the Northeast, and I'm like, you know what, let me try to do a show. Let me try to do a, you know, if I can't be in their world, I'll try to create my own. So I ran one, one show that led to, I think I've, I'm on 65, 70 shows in the last, wow. like, four and a half years. And the real backbone of that is uh, the schools. You know, I started a school, and that's really hard because I don't have, you know, TV exposures. So they're like, you know, why should I train with you? There's Hall of Famer so-and-so has a school in Brooklyn. and Huge you know, fan of so-and-so. Uh, <laughs> that speech he gave at the Hall of Fame? Incredible. <laughs> it was nuts. <laughs> you know, why should I go there? We could train with this person or that, you know, they, they have four people that went to WWE from this school. 
Um, but my school started like getting a reputation because I'm the guy doing the drills. I'm the guy who's really you know busting my butt, making sure people know how to do everything. And while Brian, Kurt Hawkins, whatever you want to call him, uh, was not really doing much. He would come down, and we're lifelong friends, and train in his off time. And he's like, wow, this is fun. This is great. So I'm like, look, let, you want to open up a school in Long Island? And that's how that happened. It was like, hey, so now I have two. One in Jersey, I'm there a couple days a week, and one day a week on Long cool. Island. And, and you th- you've almost done like seven, you've promoted 70 shows, you'd say? Yeah. And like you guys, you don't bring just like local wrestlers you bring people from all over and and, and you you're known like you know wrestle is known for bringing these like obscure mm-hmm. dudes right like is there like a like a list of just randos that have been like number one for me uh like number one for me i think is mantar when i think of mantar yeah you guys had fantasio yes who i don't know if you remember him he was yeah. the guy who pulled uh DeVito's underwear and then the referee's underwear. He looks he looks great too. <laughs> yeah. He, he walked in, I'm like, oh my God, big jacked up dude. And what man, are what are the other guys that are there? Hmm. That are real real gems. Gosh. Uh PN I wouldn't say PN News. That's, That's a kind good of a kind of a rando one. Who Did for, he rap? Oh God, this is a bad one. Oh. <laughs> so he's so nice and so polite. I know he's still working, like in can deliver. In Europe. Yes. Yes. And he gets off the plane and he's like forgot my gear. I'm like, oh, God. I thought you were going to say, I forgot my rap sheet. So I'm like, you know, it's kind of hard because I guess, like, if, fan, if he's wearing the bright, colorful, you know, backwards hat and the singlet, okay, I recognize that it would at least hit part of the group that's there watching that night. Part of the fans would know who he is. And we put him with uh, a team at the time called the Fat Pack. And these were very husky, you know, uh, it was Fat Pat and a guy named Falaba who's doing very well in the independence. And we're like, let's stick him with their very hip-hop, overweight guys going to the ring. And he was their manager and walked them out. And it was just a very loud diabetes chant. Oh, God. Very, <laughs> very, very, I'm, first time ever. And I was like, oh, I feel so First time so ever good. in professional <laughs> wrestling. Di- diabetes. Did uh, they like diabetes? And I... I think they were just like trying they to, were pro diabetes. I think they were just getting under their skin. It was a very, uh, very and then he didn't freestyle about diabetes. No, which no, I think I, would be the way to go. No, he was very polite though. And then, um, so what are the like very early on this podcast? I told a story, and I almost don't even remember I told the story. But uh, you called Psycho Sid. Yes, you guys, you remember that, huh? Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing: in the ring, he called him in the ring. <laughs> There's, I got both praise and I guess hatred for that because here's the thing it was my first show ever so I'm literally if this show doesn't do well I'm practically homeless I'm like this is my life savings into this one show it's make or break and I wanted to do a big main event and unfortunately even though you know we're I would love to just book independent wrestlers I would love to just do that that doesn't really sometimes attract a crowd because you need to promote to the town and have recognizable TV faces on posters. It's just the way it is. I wish it wasn't that way. It stinks. That's, that's the way it works sometimes. So our main event for that show was Matt Hardy versus Psycho Sid. Uh, very obscure, and for the time period, like, you know, I, just, I, I felt like, okay, this could be interesting to see. So that being the main event, I wake up early for the day of the show. I live about an hour or so away at the time. Get my car. I'm all eager, but I've done so much planning. You know, it, it's promoted the town and, and just done everything I could to make this show successful. I get in the car. I get a phone call. Sid's not getting on the plane. Why? Uh, he said he lost his wallet. Okay. Uh, can he find some way to get there? Nope. He doesn't have an ID. His knee also is hurting him because he played softball like a week before. Just excuse. I knew there was- Excuse after excuse after excuse. Clearly, he just wasn't getting on the plane, which is mind blowing because we had him for the show. We had him on like two or different, th- two to three bookings. Really good money, and I'm like, this is this is a nightmare. This is my main event on my first show ever. This is a disaster. I go, the show's just gonna be shut down. Got to tell fans they gotta they gotta go away. Um, so anyway, get to the building. Uh, the, the surprisingly, my first show had about 800 people. You were on it. Mm-hmm. And I go, what do I do? do? Do I go to the fans and go like, hey, you know, the main event tonight. Granted, there was a lot of other good stuff on the show and recognizable names and top indie guys. But it's like, what do I do? Do I go, hey, guys, sorry, Sid's not here and watch the whole line turn around. So, you know, against better judgment, I let them all in. And I'm like, I got, I got to do something about this. Like, it doesn't sit well with me. How can I turn this negative into a positive? So go to the ring, and I go, you know, everybody, here's exactly what happened. He didn't get on the plane. His flight was booked. He lost at softball, and he was crying about it. (laughs) 
Let's be honest, that's the real reason. It, it might have been. Yeah, he struck out like four times in a row. <laughs> he, was real, he had a real shitty day. So I was like, you know what, let's, let's give him a phone call right now. Let's see, let's see what he says. So I called him up and... You know, uh, it went right to his voicemail, and the whole crowd booed him on voicemail. <laughs> and then I said, you know, for anyone that wants to call them themselves, and I gave out Sid's number. <laughs> and people were like, oh, that wasn't his real number. And, no, that was his real number. Yeah. And I heard he had to change his number. Hasn't changed his number. So, 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 the, so go back, buy that go show. Go back, buy that show. <laughs> get the number. And get the number. Do and it again. you're good. See, I think your real problem was uh, you had Matt Hardy. Should have booked Brother Nero. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's... My favorite thing that's, in wrestling. I mean, that's where... That's I where really love it. it. Great. And so, um, where, uh, what are the shows these days? Well... Uh, or what are their internet we password? Got, you know, What's your password? <laughs> we're at a time... I want to promote the one that's going to be happening with you in Sandow, but it's not going to be yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we have... You know, I have about, I'd say... 11 shows lined up from here till January. Great. So there's really big ones. Our home base in Rahway, New Jersey. It's only two hours away from here, so if you guys want to come out and see us. Uh, but they're all over, you know, New Jersey, New York. I'd like to spread out a little more. But WrestleProOnline.com, you can see all these, uh, you know, fun-filled events with, you know, independent guys and TV names. Any, anyone that, like, I think wrestling should be a good show. Shouldn't be, I don't like being niche or niche, whatever the word is. I like to kind of just present something for everybody. So whether it be, you know, you know, because you never know what people's tastes are. You, you may come and go, man, I really hate that part, but I really like this part. And I think that's, that's my way of promoting, not just keeping in one, you know, not just hard, like incredibly action-packed wrestling and not just, you know, past 1980s WWE guys. Like, I think you need a kind of a fun mixture to have a really good crowd. And it's been working out for me. Great. And WrestleProOnline.com, you're on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Buck Never Stops. if you want to follow me. On Twitter? On Twitter, on Instagram, when I remember to use it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wonderful. Pat Buck, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's welcome my uh, next guest. He is the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. And I think my favorite part of that was, as I announced Chris, who was sitting in the back, and everybody is completely looking at me, he stood up and said, hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Nobody was looking at him. <laughs> and now he's here, and you can do your... Yeah, I'm a little out of character. I have my glasses on, I guess. You, yeah, you look, like a, you look real studious. Yeah, everybody says I always look very nice, but as soon as I take my glasses off, everybody all of a sudden becomes very intimidated. Or they hear you talk, and they just hear that thick East Coast accent. Like right now, I'm like I'm okay, but like it'll slowly, it'll slowly start. To Where come exactly out are you more. from? I'm from Staten Island. Yeah, it's yeah, it's there. I'm I'm from a a, a completely Italian family. I'm 100% Sicilian. I'm from Staten Island. My entire family's from Brooklyn. There it was. I heard it. Yeah. I heard everyone heard it. My entire my, family. My entire family's from Brooklyn. I was, I'm the only person in my family born in Staten Island. So, how, did that, how did that work? They went to the hospital that day in Staten Island by mistake? No, no. They, uh, they, moved, they, they moved to Staten Island a couple years before I was born. I but they already had my brother and sister. I could just repeat after you this whole podcast. <laughs> they all moved over to Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that's me. I, you know, I, I could sit here and I could address everybody like this, and I don't have to. I could really try hard to not use my accent, but if I'm going to sit here and talk naturally, sure, of course, oh. I, please, please, <laughs> and, and I can't. Um, the Dirty Daddy, yeah, which is uh, where'd you get that nickname from? I love it. It's kind of a mixture of things, actually. Like, uh, I, by the way, I love it. You, you always liked my name, huh? Dirty Daddy is the greatest. That makes me feel pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, what a great nickname. Well, I have a friend of mine who is actually a huge, huge wrestling fan. I'll probably actually be uh, dying to listen to this eventually. But um, he always called me Dirty. I love how you, you refuse to say his name. No, his name's Lance. Okay. Like, he's like that friend in high school I would play fire pro wrestling with for like hours and hours and hours. Like we would watch wrestling. He, uh, We would watch... DVDs and go to Ring of Honor and all that stuff and we were just like really really into wrestling and he always called me dirty I think he was referring to me as like because uh, we love Wu-Tang Clan like I was supposed to be like the old dirty bastard so it was like you know you're the old dirty bastard and he has this really like kind of uh, he's also has a thick accent but 
he's like he's a Jewish kid, so he like <laughs> and he's really really skinny, but he's also kind of like a smart ass too. He kind of talks like this, <laughs> like he's like, oh, dirty. We gonna watch and get down on some great Muda tonight? <laughs> like that's like it's just like really strange. I can't explain it. But he's like one of my best friends still to this day. And then my friend Jesse, this kid that I worked out with all the time, he's just like a a monster, and like we would like work out. He's bigger than me, and he, he could outlift me and, like, everything. So we'd be, like, working out and doing, like, bench press and stuff like that. And he was just somebody I knew from the gym. And he would be – every time I, like, couldn't get as many reps out as he could, it was, like, you know, or something like that, he'd just look at me and he'd go, don't worry. Daddy's here for you. And I was just like, wow, that's such a good insult. Right. I was like, that's such an – how can I work that into my wrestling character? And somehow, like – the dirty daddy just became a thing and then I, I made a t-shirt of it and I sold like so many of them and I was like I guess this is a thing and then slowly people started going like dirty daddy and I was like up oh, here that's it I love when like I love when stuff like that like happens where it's just real life and, and you're like yeah and, and just especially like I guess uh, with a heel persona or whatever it might be where it's just like, God, that gets under my skin. And you're like, oh. Yeah. I, I mean, I had like so many people try to always, because uh, I have the, the re my wrestling, it, it, it could go in different directions. Like last night, obviously, I was having a little bit more fun. Sometimes I could just be like straight away killer. And, um, but I'm like a 80s wrestling guy, you know? And the, the Dirty Daddy was something that I felt I could like adopt into that whole like idea of, of what I want to do with my character. And I always had guys trying to tell me what, what they thought the Dirty Daddy was. And, uh, you know, I, I loved it. I loved how people thought, it, thought about like what the Dirty Daddy could be because I always wanted to be like, like ravishing Rick Rude. Mm -hmm. And like people always assumed like the Dirty Daddy was like a guy like Rick Rude, like a, like a real sleazy sexual type of character. And I liked playing that into my shtick, you know? Yeah, I could see uh, yeah, Vince McMahon taking uh, Paul Roma into uh, oh. a meeting and being like, I love Paul Roma. We're going to call you the Dirty Daddy. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Paul Roma, by the way. I yeah. love Paul Roma. And you ran into to, to Paul Roma? I actually uh, had something lined up where I was supposed to wrestle him for like way lower than what I usually would get paid, but it was a total mark out thing just to wrestle yeah. Paul Roma. I'll pay you, Paul Roma. Have you, have I... you... <laughs> Have you ever seen Paul Roma's shoot interview? I, I haven't. I've, I mean, maybe I'd seen snippets like, of you it. You want to talk about like cool Jean, like, like straight, what? like cool Jean, like straight, like a Wait, Greek. what? <laughs> like, cool Jean? Cool, cool Jean. Like, it's, it mean, Spell that for it's me. Like an, it's like Italian slang for like your cousin. You know what I mean? C-U-G-I-N-A. C-U-G. What is it? I-N-A. <laughs> By a round of applause, has anyone ever heard that before? You want to? I, so, do you really want to talk about like your, uh, your, you know, oh my cousin Tommy? Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's like that guy, and he was like telling this. He told like these crazy stories about how uh, he was like left off the card in like some building, and like, but like his uncles who were like mobbed up in some union, they were the construction people that built the building, and they like went backstage and told Vince McMahon, he's like my cousin, he's on this show. <laughs> it's like, like yeah, that's like a real story apparently. Do you believe it? Oh, I, absolutely. Yeah, I want to believe it, and even if it's not true, I still believe I it. I like the, I like the idea of those same coo jeans going up to Ric Flair and Arn Anderson and be like. My cousin's gonna be a horseman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like was uh, was he was he was he basically were they forced into him having to be a horseman because nobody wanted to get their leg broken? I mean, I didn't know that until now. Yeah. But he, yes. told, he told some crazy <laughs> stories in that shoot interview too, like st all the sexual stuff you hear about Vince and Patterson and all those guys. Good stuff. You should good stuff. Check good quality it. stuff. I, uh, Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob, Rob Feinstein. <laughs> Knows, quality. Rob Feinstein knows, oh, know, knows that I'm such a, a Paul Roma mark that he made me write like a synopsis for the TV. Oh, you yeah, really? Or something? Yeah, that's great. I know. Little hit it. That's like uh, if you didn't know, you know, Taz used to ship out the T-shirts, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Bubba Ray would make the designs, <laughs> and Chris Dickinson writes the synopsis for the shoot interviews. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Uh, you just went and did a tour of of, uh, of England, right? Yeah, I was in England for six weeks. That's pretty crazy. Oh, it was. It was because awesome. you're. I mean, you know, like uh, that's like, hey, I'm in, right? I, I think when you go to a six week tour of England, you're like, I'm in, all in with professional wrestling. No, right? absolutely. And uh, it, it was it was a big a big move for me, especially financially. I have to thank Stephen Flutter who uh, runs Press and. City Wrestling, I mean, bringing me there, getting me all of the bookings for, you know, 
the the numbers that I got, and the way everything worked out, it was a dream come true. It was, you know, it was a great tour. It was like, oh wow, you know, this is my job. Like I'm a professional wrestler for real. Like you know, I'm, I've always just kind of, I, I, my dream was always to do exactly what I'm doing now. You know, a lot of guys are always like, oh, I just want to go to the WWE. Like I just want to wrestle at WrestleMania. It's like. No, like I, I looked up to guys like Cole Cabana and guys like Loki and Homicide, and those are the guys like I really, I wanted to be. I was an intense, intensely, uh, you know, obsessive fan over like independent wrestling back in the heyday, and you know, I wanted to tour places and do all that stuff. So getting to go to England and getting paid well to do it and being able to wrestle every weekend, three shows, you know, teaching wrestling twice a week at a wrestling school. Uh, doing seminars and all that stuff. It's it's a great experience, and it's a lot of traveling. It's a lot of traveling. It's a grind. You know, a lot of people think that you know this stuff is easy, or you know what what goes on out there is is just like a small fraction of what we have to do. It, the getting to the shows, it's not luxurious. You know that. Of I course. mean, you're still doing it. Yeah. You know, it's not luxurious, and it's not fun sometimes. You have to really enjoy what you're doing in order to go through some of the stuff that you're uh, that you're doing. Chris, where are you at on the internet, buddy? Well, on the internet, on uh, Twitter, I'm at Dirty Dickinson. On uh, Instagram, at Born Dirty Die Dirty. You could uh, add me on Facebook. I have a website. It's uh, BornDirtyDieDirty.com. It's currently under construction, but um, it's there. And uh, pretty much, yeah, that's that's where you could get me on the internet. Chris Dickinson, ladies and gentlemen, the daddy. Thank you. All right. In the weirdest uh, timing of guests, uh, let's welcome our next guest, uh, the little Indian kid, Sanjay Dutt. (laughs) Can you verify this whole story? His Indian accent, I mean, it sounded like a Chinese, what what, what was that? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know what that was. I was so confused on what he was trying to accomplish. I mean, I was playing with that with his voices the whole time. It was was fun to talk like it. Ridiculous. Can you imagine him and Kevin Matthews just in a car talking together? (laughs) (laughs) It would be amazing. What a great time. How if Kevin Matthews was your co-host today? How about that? Uh, No, he he didn't show up. Oh, he didn't show up. Sadly, he didn't. The acoustics. Oh, he did. Oh, he did show up. (laughs) You you can hear him from across the room. Kevin, how you doing? (laughs) <laughs> Don't need a mic for him. It's a natural microphone. These acoustics are amazing in here. Great, right? Holy cow. Wow. Whew, amazing. Grand Slam Wrestling. We should give it up for Grand Slam Wrestling. We'll give it up for Grand Slam Wrestling. Yeah. If I could have this on every podcast. I know. Imagine. Look at this equipment. This is amazing. Sanjay, you no stranger to the art of wrestling. I want to say this is my third appearance here the on third the art appearance of on the art of wrestling I'm always honored. known as a guy who's uh, on the most random shows we talked about that as we were in india together on the most random on the most yeah. yes how random was that the, ridiculous tanji and i wrestled in india we, there's a whole podcast about whole it. whole podcast that you can listen to but this year has been like the year of the randoms for me it's i mean Places that I didn't even know existed, <laughs> you know, Myanmar, which I had to actually get on. And I'm very. You and who? What's that? You and who? Who? You and who? He, huh? What? Huh? You and who? Myanmar, which was, was formerly ner- known as Burma. So I had to actually go on Google. I put in Myanmar. I said I, I had heard of Burma, but I didn't know what Myanmar was. I guess they changed it, changed their name for some reason. But Myanmar, which is in Southeast Asia, um, and uh, I did Peru. I've done. Uh, I just got back from Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. You're wrestling in these places? Wrestling in these places. For? For fans. For WWE? What's going on? <laughs> no, no. I just, I'm, I'm going to Peru. Peru. I, I did. Are these, nor- like. Oh, Sudan was the weirdest Come one. On. Sudan. A place, a place that has so many human rights violations due to genocide and all these other things. <laughs> I, I went there and I wrestled. And your wife's like, yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> she cried. She, cried. <laughs> she legitimately cried. She was like, please don't go to Sudan. And you said, honey, I've never been said, to Sudan. I said, I've never been to Sudan and I'm flying on Star Alliance. I got to get the miles. <laughs> <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs> Most important. <laughs> are these, like, it's not that it's weird, but like we come to America, like when we're in America, we're in England, like the fans are just like our people. Like we know them, we can talk to them. They're real people. Not in Sudan. It, not in Sudan. I mean, Johnny Storm was in Sudan with me. Johnny Storm, and um, 
He runs, uh, intermission happens, and he runs to outside with his pictures. I said, what the hell are you doing? He goes, I'm going to sell some pictures, mate. I said, this is Sudan. They don't have enough money to buy lunch. What are they going to do, buy your picture? And in Sudan, which I figured out when I went over there, uh, there's so many embargoes set on, on Sudan due to these human rights violations and whatnot that their currency is it's nothing. It's like just... You know, regular paper. It, 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 there's, there's no value to it. So I'm like, what are you going to do with it? Let's say you did sell a picture. What are you going to do with that money? You, you can't transfer that into pounds. Nobody accepts that cash. These people don't even want their own money, dude. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and then like five minutes later, I see him coming back with his, with his pictures. Defeated, Defeated, right? Defeated completely. Where'd you go? Did you sell any, Johnny? Yeah, yeah I went the whole time. Uh, the heckled him the rest of the day. <laughs> well, who's buying... Who's buying tickets to this? Or is it like, in, when we wrestled in India, tickets were the equivalent of one dollar. Like a dollar, yeah, American, yeah. And, and we did great. Yeah. Yeah. So in Sudan. Sudan, I want to say. Is it like the diehards on the Sud- Sudanese smart I don't internet think, wrestling fans? Okay, so. Is there a Sudanese <laughs> internet wrestling community? <laughs> so we landed, it was me, Carlito, M-Dog, and uh, one, of the, one of the Samoans, uh, Lloyd, and Everybody thought that I was Rey Mysterio. <laughs> so, do you milk so, that for all of it? I, I got looked at Carly and I was like, what do I, do? I just I just keep it's going with me, this, right? Rey Mysterio, yeah. hello. <laughs> so all these Sudanese people are just one after another. Hello, Ray. Hello, Ray. Nice to meet you, Ray. Nice to meet you. And I was just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait till Ray comes tomorrow and you see him. Like, I don't know what you're gonna think I am. So they knew who Rey Mysterio was. He was he was he was literally the only person that they did know of. Of. They, none of them were wrestling fans. None of them knew any. They just knew Rey Mysterio was going to be on the show. And it was in a soccer stadium that held 40,000 people. And I want to say there was 5,000 people. And well, I that's think a lot right. of... Yeah, which was, which was great. It looked amazing. It, they were scattered. And uh, I think a lot of it was like... It was through like the Minister of Interior. And uh, I think it was kind of like like forced to come at gunpoint <laughs> like you guys have to come to the wrestling show and have to buy pictures <laughs> and have to buy Johnny Storm pictures <laughs> uh, did you do ayahuasca in Peru no but um, I asked them about it and they all knew they just oh yeah 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 like, I said have you guys done it oh no 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 not, not at all but that's a thing that everyone's doing yes I guess it's a thing and where and okay Sudan 5,000 people uh, Peru, Peru. There was about four hundred. But I could, I went to Peru, and there's like people who like knew who I was. Oh my! It was yeah. It was Peru was like a real wrestling crowd. It's a, like real, a real place. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, 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 there was a ton of wrestling fans and WWE T-shirts, and mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was wrestling. Myanmar, Myanmar. They didn't know what the hell was going on. No uh, clue. They knew. They they thought. I think they. So they thought. They, they were going to go see like a kickboxing event, you okay. know. <laughs> it was in a kickboxing ring. It was a kickboxing facility, um, but they reinforced the ring so we could actually take bumps and whatnot. And um, it, it was uh, and that was like, it was a good show. Matt, uh, Chono was there. Masahiro Chono. He was came to Myanmar. <laughs> Did he wrestle? <laughs> no, he just he made an appearance, and and I'm thinking. If he's here, these people have to know who he is. And like a smidgen of them did, but I don't. It wasn't like an overwhelming thing. Like we just all came to see Masahiro Chono here yeah. in Myanmar. Someone must have just been a f- into him. One person, I guess. I, it, 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 a lot of it, it was. It was a lot. Of, it was a big connection to the Japanese wrestling scene, the Myanmar show. Um, so it was very Japanese oriented. And then what was the other one? There was a fourth weird. Uh, one. Let's see. I just did Malaysia. Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur. I did What's Malaysia. What's that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I even took an Uber in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah. I, which is which? I had no clue, but I said, "Let me try." I hopped on the app, and bam! Uber cars in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Do they have Malaysian professional wrestlers? They do. They do. They do. They have a Malaysian wrestling federation. Is it called M- it is. MWF? MWF, <laughs> Malaysian Wrestling Federation. That I know. <laughs> <laughs> and who's like, is there a, maybe I don't want to put you on the spot, but is there a star of the Malaysian Wrestling Federation? Uh, Shakat. His name was Shakat. Which means uh, in Hebrew, know. shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that I do know. That I do know. Yeah, he was a big star. Uh, Malaysia was interesting. I love sightseeing. I love taking advantage of these things. So I had a day off, and I took a cab, and I went to see 
the Batu Caves. Um, I love doing all that stuff. Sudan, I wanted to see something, but the, we went to the Nile River. We did a, did a boat ride on the Nile River. And You're not supposed to... Is that a thing? There's like... Well, I mean, it, it would be best if I had not done it, uh, just safety reasons. Oh, There's, yes, Conan was saying on my podcast. <laughs> yes, yes. I was covering myself with, with uh, paper towels, napkins, whatever I could grab. I just wanted to cover every inch of skin. Uh, there's... There's cholera, there's malaria, there's yellow fever, typhoid. You need all these shots to go to Sudan. I didn't get any of you them. You didn't get them. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody you're the did. First, you're, so like, you're so meticulous, I know you so well, that you, that's the first thing you're doing is going to get those well, shots. Well, I, it never occurred to me that I needed to do this because, like, I mean, I've done all these randoms, and I've never done that. And then, like, three days before I'm supposed to leave, my wife says, did you get any shots? And I said, shots for what? She goes, you're going to Sudan. I go, oh, well, okay. So I go on the CDC website, and it's uh, Center for Disease Control, and it's got a list of all these shots that are not required, but highly recommended. So we go to the doctor, and the doctor she goes, you should have started this two weeks ago. This is too late. We can't do anything for you. I said, well, okay. Then my, that's when my wife started to cry. That's, oh, uh, <laughs> She started to cry. She said, please don't go. And then the genius that you are, you're like, oh, I'll go on a tour of the <laughs> Nile River. <laughs> With so I, 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 I'm with Chris Masters. Uh, me and him are the only ones that are like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't go. And then uh, it was just peer pressure. Peer, pre- peer pressure. Uh, but I was fine. And, and, I, and I had this uh, special uh, bug spray that I had mixed in with my lotion, and I just doused myself in it. All, every inch of skin was – and I had jeans, and it was like 98-degree weather. And I heard you uh, – you sold that on Shark Tank. <laughs> Special uh, mosquito. Yeah, repellents. there you go. Ke- keeps yellow fever away. There you go. That sounded racist. <laughs> uh, Sanjay, where are you at on the internet? Uh, Twitter at Sanjay Dutterson. I'm on Facebook. If you want to put in Sanjay Dutt, I'm there. Um, I got a Pro Wrestling T, Sanjay Dutt. You got a Vine account. I got a Vine account. I think you and I, we talked about this. I think Colt and I are the only ones that still love Vine love so it. much. Love it. I mean, it's, it's the best. I, I can kill so much time just scrolling six-second videos. I could kill someone and, and, and <laughs> film it for six seconds and hope to become a Vine star. You are a Vine star. I am, well. Give it up for Colt Cobain, the Vine, Vine star. star. Vine star, Vine star. Ten, 10 million loops. 10.4 10. million We loops just checked 10. As of today. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Uh, anything else I, we, need, we need to touch upon? Or mm, you're, no, I think we're good. We're good. I Sanjay think we're good. Thanks, guys. Done. Appreciate it. Thanks, Colt. Appreciate it. Um, okay, we have two more guests, but uh, it's kind of, uh, you'll see. So let's get uh, our next guest. Please uh, welcome Karen Jarrett up here. Why does everyone choose to be so far away? I have to fill in the void now. You're like, I'm talking. I'm waiting for you to come up. Here we are. I'm definitely not going to be as entertaining as Sanjay was. So He's an entertaining... You guys got to wake up. <laughs> yeah! So quiet. I think they've been great I'm so, so <laughs> far. Oh, my goodness. And you can't goodness. just come... Yes! You are such a natural heel that you come right in I and you tell heel. them all the... You yes. guys have all sucked so smiles. far. I want smiles. Whether I'm funny or not, you have to laugh and you have to clap. Oh, hi. And I'm so nervous. You are? Yes. Why? I don't know. This is, you've been why you've been watching. That's yes. your problem. And you've been yes. seeing what a fun show we've been yes. having. Yes, and everybody's been so good. Yeah. Yeah. So what are, what are we going to bring to the and table? And I always get in trouble. Anytime I do an interview... What did podcast, you get? Well, I don't... I do. I, don't, I say things I shouldn't say, and I get in trouble. Like what? <laughs> I'm not falling for it. Well, there was that big one on uh, with the Jim Ross's thing, yeah, right? Um, I don't know what you're we, talking about. We don't want to talk. Yeah, let's about not it. put over other people's podcasts right yeah. now. Oh my so, god! We're here for you, buddy. We're here for you. I broke my own cardinal rule. <laughs> Oh my See god. See what happens when you bring me to the table? Yeah. Well, I th- it's, hey. just, it comes out on me. Uh, that didn't, that's what she said. Oh. Where were you on that oh one? Um, so, uh, we've been doing a lot of. Um, you're, you're in the Global Force mm-hmm. realm. I've been doing a lot yes. of Global Force shows. Yes. Uh, we've. Been doing a lot of stuff together. Yeah. We've been on a lot of shows. And you're going to continue to, right? And I'm con- of course. Yeah. I'm GF Dub for life. 
Uh, I, I think... You just committed. Well, you I, just no, totally it, committed. Well, wait till you see my tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, like, what I, I like, and if you want to tell the story that, like, the, I guess when we first kind of met was wrestling in that match in, uh, oh at goodness. WrestleCon. Yeah. And I... My favorite match I've ever I had. I was just doing my shtick. Yes. I think it blew you away a little bit, though. No, it did blow me away and totally took me off guard. And I will, after I'm done talking about this, there is one other person that I'm going to have to put over, so okay. I'll warn you ahead of time. I like how um, your phone dinged. I wish it like happened just see, as something now happened. Like, you need to shut your phone <laughs> off. Um, I go out there and I put everything out there. Make a fool of myself, do whatever I need to do to be the best heel that I can possibly be. Well, I walked into the ring with Jeff, and I didn't know you. Right. And he proceeds to do what he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like when I see a girl best. out there. And you don't normally get that from people. Or it's, you know, you go out there and you're doing your thing and you don't get anybody feeding back to you. Well, he fed back to me to the point that I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I was one of those people that I wasn't was like able to, to give back. I was trying to grab her and kiss her. And, do and then he spanked me. <laughs> yeah, I was spanking her. <laughs> and yeah, I'd imagine, because you're- I'm not complaining. No, no, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm definitely not complaining. Because you're so outgoing and like gregarious. Is that a word? But I think it's fun. I mean, thank I'm you. a mom. <laughs> Is that not a you word, gregarious? You thought that was gregarious? Yeah, that yeah, he yeah. thinks that's funny. Um, I mean, I'm at home with five kids. Yeah. I think it's fun to go out there and be a heel and be nasty and, and, and let I, everything out. And I imagine, like, with, you know, you, know, you were on TV and, and with, uh, with Jeff, it's just, like, probably people, maybe it's worse that you didn't know, so you're like, well, I don't know who this guy is. There's a lot of people that are very probably shy to even, like, do anything with you, like, like oh, I don't want to get heat or I don't want to get Jeff mad at me or anything like that, right? Really? Do you not see that happening? You don't understand no. that? See, that's what I think it would be. Whereas, like, I don't give a fuck, right? You know <laughs> things I don't know, and I love that. Yeah. But I would think a lot of people are just like, and you're very intimidating, like, which is probably weird for, uh, you know that maybe. See, Jeff says that, and I don't think I am. You don't think you are? No, I think I'm a mama hen, and I love everybody, and I take care of everyone. No? I would just While love... While I'm stealing your merch from the merch stand. And... <laughs> but I'd just love if there was, like, a line for you to just take care of everybody for, like, two minutes. Not like that. That was weird. Is there Fuck. a line? There's a line? <laughs> so you're asking me to cross the line. Cross, maybe cross the line, <laughs> yes. But, like, I love the idea that you're like, like, guys, I am a mama hen. I'm really nice. And you have to, like, mama hen but everybody. So you think people are intimidated by me? I, I, I think Or afraid so. of me? I think so. You're, I think you're an intimidating presence. Really? Yeah. Huh. Sorry. <laughs> Don't beat the shit out of me. <laughs> um, but that was a fun night, and I just was in awe about it, and I still talk about it to this day. And then a couple weeks ago, I had a match with Kevin. I was in a, involved in a match with Kevin Matthews, and I've never seen him work as a heel. Well, let me tell you. He took me to that place yeah. that you took me to where I didn't know how to respond. Yeah. I was like, holy crap. I, I, I thought he was serious at times. Right, <laughs> right. I saw him, I think yesterday's show, he literally talked to a fan. Like, like He did more talking to a fan than he did wrestling moves. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> In like, the match. He talked so much crap that I was like, oh, my God, what did I do that he's really pissed <laughs> off at me out here? Yes. Yeah, you're welcome, Kevin. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think my main question is just like, you've, you've been around wrestling for so, for so long, right? Like, you have a main question. Okay. I've been around wrestling for no, so I long. No, I mean, but you've, been, you've been around wrestling for a long time. And like, finally, you kind of like, you jumped into it. But you've been around it forever. Yeah. And I, I started out as a fan. I used to watch wrestling with my grandfather because my dad wouldn't let me watch it. And um, I mean, I love the business. But I've seen all different sides of the business. And I've seen how talent's treated on one side. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing for me is when Jeff wanted to start another company. Um, I, want peop I want the talent, men and women, to be treated as they should be treated. Um, it's a, you have to have a passion to be in this business and a love for it. And, but I don't think there's a lot of respect for you guys. 
on the other side of the business. And I hope that we can create that and, or have created that and continue to move forward with it. It's very motherly Henley of you. It is. (laughs) (laughs) It is. She punched me. Getting physical on the Boom Boom Show. So hard. Now you know why my intimidation and everyone else's is real. Um, uh, Where are you at on the internet, Karen? Where am I at on the internet? Uh, at Karen Jarrett on Twitter, on Instagram, and I'm also on Facebook. Just One? Karen Jarrett, easy. Uh, I love it. And Snapchat, Queen of the Mountain, Karen Jarrett. Karen Jarrett, ladies that and gentlemen. That was so easy, and I was so nervous. I literally wanted to puke upstairs. I did. Ask Jeff. I literally got sick, and then I was told there was a room full of people. I didn't know that. Which- Oh, you, you thought I was just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, have fun. You have not been called up here yet. Go back to the back of the room. Go back to the back of the room. Don't cut in on my time, Sam. Ladies and gentlemen, we can welcome our next guest. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Jarrett, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was told we're doing, the right, doing it the right way. You didn't want to have to fill. So when the Instagram and Snapchat, we, we know we're winding up. You, you're that smart. I mean, that's, you've been doing this a while, huh? Uh, two been years. At it. You've been at it a two while. Years. Two you years. Two years. But you, you have to know you can appreciate a real nice, um, you, know, annou- you know, announcement. That's a cabanaism. A nice uh, uh, introduction. <laughs> intro. In, in, you know, I don't need an intro. Let's get down. Let's, look, let's just get down to the I'm dirty. your last guest. I don't guest. know if you heard that. We, we were talking about the idea of um, contracts, and I was talking about the idea of how much I appreciate a handshake deal. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about that, but I'd imagine in, in Memphis and for years there were no con- – with you and your dad and the companies and all – and Lawler, the, no way there was con- – was there contracts of any sort? None. I mean, but the whole era – I do have a funny story on that, but, but not with me, but it's a, about uh, – you want to hear it? Yeah. Obviously, no contracts back in those days. It was a handshake deal. You came in, and the only thing that you really had was a guarantee. All right, you know, a per night basis, bring in a top star, or if uh, Lawler went to Florida, or any of those talent exchanges for one night, they, you knew at least an amount of money. And then if the house were good, you, you got bonus and all that. But um, funny story about handsome Jimmy Valiant. One of my favorites. <laughs> so Lawler and my father... Jimmy Valiant was red hot in the territory, and they really wanted him to come, but he wanted to go back to Charlotte. I want to go back to Charlotte. I don't want to live in an apartment, uh, over, you know, in the territory days. I want to go back. Got a home over there. You know, he, he, I can work when I want. All that there. No. So anyway, they talked him in to moving to moving to Memphis, and the only way they could do that is is they bought him a house. Mm. I think he told the story on my podcast. Yeah. yeah. Have I already told it? No, no. I had Boogie Woogie on. Yeah. When in the middle of the night he leaves <laughs> with the key and the empty furniture, but he didn't tell my dad and Lawler, just went home. He just, and what was that? And the house was. It went on the market pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> and who, was it under your dad's name? Uh, yeah, the, it, it was one of those deals. Maybe the company name. It certainly wasn't under Handsome Jimmy's. When, right. he, when he got ready to go, he was gone. Wow. But they bought the house, and for like Jimmy. that's the equivalent of what a conscious. Like, was everybody talking about that? Were the wrestlers? No, 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 no one really. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I don't think people, the the, 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 the talent. I don't think people really knew. But that, was that was a big was, hush hush. Yeah, huh? yeah, I'm sure it was. I, I would assume probably. But and they, then when they, did you see? I, I guess uh, the contracts really, really. My first contract I signed with WWF was 15 shows for 150 bucks. Uh, Stop it! Wait, what? In '93, 50, 150 bucks a show. That was all they. That's all they guaranteed you. It, that, that's what. That's how the business. And at the same. At the same time, WCW was handing out those guaranteed contracts when Turner bought over. So it was a completely different world. But mm. you got the opportunity to come work for for Vince and company. That's the contract. And I think it was ten or fifteen TV tape. I mean, there was there was no nothing in there. They owned your IP. They owned this. They owned that. But it, very one-sided. But that's how the business was done. And, and then, as we know, when the Monday Night Wars took off, that's when the contracts got craziness, good and bad, money-wise, but, but very uh, 
And it depended on who you were, the leverage you had. But it, it was a big that, – that was the paradigm shift in what, contracts in the business. Yeah, it was um, – so, like, when Turner bought it, there was, there was way better deals at WCW, but there were people, like – Way better deals. People were going – sticking with WWF. Was just the idea that they could be the next Hogan or Bret Hart or Ultimate Warrior or something or – Well, because at that kind the, of – The money was so much better for Vince – it was guaranteed at, at Turner, but they weren't drawing. It was prior Nitro days. It, it was guaranteed money, but that's all you got. At WWF, you scratched and clawed and got into the main events, and your contract financially, you didn't even really look at. You know, nowadays you look at a contract, you look up things. One of the things that you look at first of all, what's compensation look like? Right. Those days. You didn't even think about that, but the, the, there was a lot. I mean, those were the wrestle, you know, back in 93, 90, yeah. It was still the f- big four, and they added the five. You know, you get on SummerSlam, you get on Mania, you get on Royal Rumble. Those paydays are huge. That's where it was at. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I said upstairs that like, I wanted to get into stuff that we didn't talk about on the one, and the one is... How many people in this room heard the Jeff Jarrett uh, Art of Wrestling? By a round of applause? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Okay. It's good for the podcast to get a round of applause. Okay. Yeah, Got yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Uh, you made a, a shirt that said Slap Nuts. That was a thing. You made that a thing. <laughs> slap Nuts was in the lexicon of professional wrestling. <laughs> Isn't it in the Urban Dictionary now or something? Is it? Something crazy. I don't know. Slap Nuts. Slap Nuts. <laughs> slap I Nuts. I know, like... The you plan? can get a shirt tonight, folks. <laughs> yeah. Slap nut shirt. For 20 American dollars. Or you can get them on Pro Wrestling Tees. There you go. Got your but plug I, in. See? Like you, just the idea that you're like, tell, just break it all down. You're like, not one day. because You've heard this story before. I haven't. Never? No. Then you don't listen to my interviews because I've been oh, asking for them. <laughs> no. Um, my grandmother used to call people slappies. And her saying was, they know more and more about less and less every day. They slap their gums. You know, somebody just talked nonsense. Okay. You're just slapping your gums, slapping your gums. And sort of slappy went into, oh, my brother-in-law, we were slap nuts, sort of originated out of that. And then it was a WCW promo, and I said it because we were. it was sort of talking. That, so that wasn't like, you didn't have like a grand plan of like, I'm going to make this a thing. Boy, I would love to say that I had this really? marketing. Really, just... oh, I said it, and and uh, the camera guy started cracking up. And uh, Ed Farrar, um, who else was there? Bill Bears coming up, like, what did you just say? That was great. That was great. That was great. They just took off on it. And uh, the following week, because it, it was like, oh, you got to say that again. You say that again. Uh, standards and practices. Uh, do y'all know what standards and practices is? Should yeah, I? it was um, Val Venus. No, 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 and, no. no. Uh, I know. <laughs> you got real mad. <laughs> it's legal. It's, it's for, 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 well, for the simple term, it's legal. At WCW, standards and practice came up to me and pulled me in a room and said, look, we need to have a conversation with you. W- you need to help us out. What is slap nuts? And I just looked at him like, what? And they're like, well, w- w- we don't think we're going to allow this on air. And I said, dude, what are you talking about? And they were serious. And there was a, they actually spent time, probably hours debating, are we going to let we, you know, going to let it uh, uh, air and get, we're going to be able to let you say that. And so, boy, the big decision came down for the, from the 19th floor. Yes, you can were say you? slap nuts. <laughs> and was there a big celebration? But, but party? When, I, when I knew that we were on to, yeah, yeah, hey, cheers. No, <laughs> I, I knew we were on to something, uh, where the Pistons play in Detroit. Uh, help me out. Cobo Palace Arena? Of Palace, Palace of Auburn Hills. We did a Nitro there. And how the uh, kids or, or you know, young men, you know, one of them had an S, but they had it spelled out up in the cheap seats, all that, mm-hmm. up there. And they shot it and all that. That's when uh, the merchandise guy came in and says, we got to get a shirt. And I said, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and that's, is, that, is that like a, like, can you see? That's kind of interesting. Like, you can see when stuff's about to pop. Yes. Does that like bring that, up that, that was I mean, when I said it backstage? I'm like, wow, that that got over to people that are quote unquote in the business. Oh, and then I'm like, okay. And then the next week, 
when standards and practices come, and it wasn't one or two weeks past that. I may be off. Maybe you guys look at the WWE Network. But whenever that went down, and I may be off, but I just remember seeing the signs in the crowd. And that there was a picture that I sold for a lot of years anyway mm. that had that Detroit the, the gotcha. p- palace. But, but when it was started being signs right away, and, and why, just if, if anything comes to mind, like while wow, you've been in wrestling for for all these years, like have you ever like what's some of the stuff that you've kind of organically seen happen? Oh wow! And it becomes a thing. And I'll give you an example, just if you want, if you want some yes. filler. Like I just remember in Ring of Honor, I thought it was the coolest thing that they started throwing uh, toilet paper at Jimmy Rave, and then and then it became a thing that just like he would be showered with toilet paper, and it's like one of those things about. I mean, that's what obviously what's so great about wrestling. Yes, is just when you have like those six or seven things that like the fans get to participate in or they're part of well, or they do. The, the two that come to my mind, and this is obviously no big hidden secret, but but the staying power. I mean, when Austin said, that's the bottom line, I mean, that King of the Ring promo, you go, oh, wow, mm-hmm. that bit. And then the what? I mean, how long has Steve been out now? Jesus. For, for right. years. I mean, how long that's been going on? Ten years? Yeah, if, yeah. if not more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, if that isn't a sing-along chant, I mean, and it's, that's staying power, that, that kind of stuff. And it came out of total organic. And were you guys, like, so were you, back, were you backstage or whatever, and you just heard him hit those, and were, were people like, Ooh, like, was it a big pop? I was, uh, I was gone from W. Yeah, I was, I, I was, gone I, I was in WCW okay. at the time. But I remember... I watched it. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I watched it live or not, but I remember watching it going, that was a promo. Right. You were in WCW at that time. I believe so. How, uh, how crazy was WCW? Boy, <laughs> this, this podcast isn't, isn't long enough. Um, like, because you came in in a pretty sweet position. So were you just, were you loving it or were you like, this place is fucked? Or are you like, I'm going to ride this for what it is? I think, no, no. It, it, it is, I mean, I knew and I heard stories. Obviously, we got buddies on both sides of the fence, and I had worked there a couple years before that. But to actually live it, breathe it, sleep it every day, it's, it, was, it was true insanity. And me, obviously, growing up in the business and, and seeing it from the promoter side and, and all the different sides, it was just, to me, complete madness because it was dog-eat-dog world. And you can do that in this business to a certain level, but talent on multi-million dollar contracts, not going to shows, the shows being written while it's on the air, the, the you know, and, and what I did, and I've said this a, a, a bunch of times been asked, I, I made up my mind a couple of months into that going, the only thing I can, because I'm not going to get down and be miserable and bitch and do all that right up down the roads and just make it worse. Only thing I can really control is when I go through the curtain and interact with the audience. And so I made it a point that I, that I don't think there's a period of, you know, I've always tried to have good matches. And as you get a little bit older, you get a little bit smarter and maybe a little bit lazier, but no, that era of, 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 of Jeff Jarrett, I don't think I collectively put as much effort into my in ring product during that time, because it, I mean, I was in a good spot. I was a world champion a couple of times at main event on, on pay-per-views, but I knew that's the only thing that could really make you happy because it was a, you know, it was it was nuts. It was, you can't describe how crazy it was. It was. Slap nuts. nuts. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a true host right there. He dialed it right back into <laughs> slap nuts. Uh, Jeff, where are you at on the internet, and uh, and where can we find more information about Global Force Wrestling? GlobalForceWrestling.com. Real Jeff Jarrett on Twitter. Real Jeff Jarrett on Instagram. I do have a Snapchat. I think it's Real Jeff Jarrett. I don't use it enough. My kids do. I just found out uh, yesterday on one of my blogs. Snapchat. There are more Snapchat users than Twitter users. Yeah, it's taking that, that over. blew me away. Uh, and 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 folks, I appreciate you guys coming out. We have partnered with A. Smith Productions, a huge production company out of Los Angeles. They do a brand new show called Spartan Race, but American Ninja Warrior and a bunch of others. We got some really cool stuff cooking. Stay tuned because 2016 is, is going to be a monumental year for us, folks. All right. Jeff Jarrett, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Um, Hey, that is the show for this week. Uh, Let's give it up for our guests one more time. Kurt Hawkins, Pat Buck, Chris Dickinson, Sanjay Dutt, Karen Jarrett, and Jeff Jarrett. Hey, one more thing. Let me sneak in here and do some plugs and... Upcoming events. 
All right, Wrestling Road Diaries 3, available now. ColtMerch.com. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana. Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash Colt Cabana. Past archives of the show are ad-free. They're on Howl.fm. Use the code Colt. Get yourself a free month. Colt Wrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe you're a promoter. You want to put me in your upcoming show or convention. I got a YouTube channel. Go check out the videos there. Also, ColtCabana.com is my website. I got a P.O. box there. You can send me some snail mail or send me something fun. Upcoming October 29th, November 3rd, and November 4th, Baltimore, Arlington, and San Antonio, ROHWrestling.com. Tonight, if you're listening, Thursday, October 27th, Chicago, Illinois, FreelanceWrestling.com. Sunday, October 30th, Gainesville, Florida, TheFestFL.com. Saturday, November 5th, Bedford, Texas, Metro. ProplexWrestling.com. Friday, November 11th, San Francisco, California, AllProWrestling.com. Saturday, November 12th, St. Paul, Minnesota, HeavyOnWrestling.com. Saturday and Sunday, November 19th and 20th, Rahway in Newark, New Jersey, WrestleProOnline.com. Those are promoted by Pat Buck, who you heard on the show. Wednesday, November 23rd in Chicago, Illinois. That's the comedy show Marty and I are doing live at NorthBar.com. Friday, November 25th, Cleveland, Ohio, AIWrestling.com. Saturday, November 26th, Chicago, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. Sunday, November 27th, Hamilton, Ontario, Alpha-1Wrestling.com. And we're going to do a live podcast before that show also. Okay, back to me at the live show, closing it out. I'd like to thank Global Force Wrestling. I'd like to thank Grand, uh, Grand Slam Wrestling for help setting all of this up. Let's thank Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music, Dane Miller with some tech. I do want to uh, thank some of my sponsors really quickly. Highspots.com. Uh, hundreds of full-length titles available to download. They have a subscription box, and they have an unbelievable VOD system where you can uh, sign up for monthly and get all PWG, $5 wrestling stuff. You can get a wrestling ring. You can get wrestling gear. You can get knee pads. You can get it all. Highspots.com. OneHourTees.com. They help run pro wrestling. WrestlingTees.com. Uh, for the most part, I think everyone has a store who is on this show. Uh, you can get some bigger shirts, some shirts that I'm not selling at ColtMerch.table over there. It's a great way to support independent wrestling and independent wrestlers. And TweakedAudio.com slash Colt, the earbuds that I use, get over 30% off and free shipping just because you listen to this show. I'm showing to you them right now. I really do use them. Uh, that is the show for this week. Thank you very much. I hope you guys had a good time. This has been the art of wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks.